watch one time around the entire planet. Now, would any of you, a little show of hands, any of you like to do that someday? Float in space and look out the window and see an entire time around the planet in an hour and a half? That is absolutely something I am really excited to do. And I'm very fortunate um, to have this job as an astronaut and get ready to get on board a rocket, light that thing, blast off into space, and I'll get to see that uh, someday in the future. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but there are some really exciting things happening in space, and a lot more of you are going to have that amazing opportunity, if that interests you, to be uh, an astronaut, to fly in space, uh, to be part of the team that makes space exploration possible. There's a lot of really exciting opportunities in this field because it's, it's growing very quickly. Uh, one more thing by way of introduction, this year is kind of a special year for us because we're planning to launch uh, one of my Canadian astronaut colleagues, David Saint-Jacques, into space. He'll be going to the International Space Station in November of this year. So you're gonna finish out this school year, you'll come back to school next year, and we're gonna have a Canadian in space. I think that's uh, gonna be super fun. I know uh, there should be some questions out there, so I look forward to answering them. So why don't you guys fire away? Thank you, Jeremy. So we will start with a question from St. Gregory the Great Academy. What are some important lessons or skills that you learned in your um, intense astronaut training? And sorry, I missed the one part. Important what skills? Astronaut skills or was it something else? Lessons or skills that you learned in your intense astronaut training? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, let me answer it this way. If, if somebody asks me what, it's, what is important to become an astronaut, I always tell them three things. So uh, the first thing is, is that you have to have what I call operational skills. So you have to be able to make decisions in uh, tough situations, life or death deci decisions when it's critical. And if you want to know how to prepare for that, you actually have to challenge yourself as you go through life. So all of you are really young, but there are challenges out there for you to take on if you're interested in being a space explorer. Things like joining school groups, sports teams. Um, for me, I became an air cadet. Uh, air cadets eventually taught me to fly, uh, volunteering uh, at a hospital. All these things that kind of challenge you, new experiences, are how you prepare to have what I call operational skills. So that's number one. The second thing, you're already doing it, is academics. So it's important that you find something that you're passionate about, something that you love to learn about, and uh, you become a bit of an expert in that field and you follow it through a, a university degree because we need astronauts to be able to learn and assimilate knowledge and then apply it in space and take care of themselves and learn and do science experiments in space. So those were the first two, operational skills and academics. Here's the third one. And I think this is the most important answer to your question is team skills. Astronauts don't go to space by themselves. And even the astronauts that go to space could not do it if there wasn't a huge, huge team of people on the ground supporting them. And so learning to work together as a team, learning to be honest with people, learning to talk about your own strengths and your own weaknesses and understanding that you're the same as everybody else, you're not perfect and you need to make adjustments. All of those things are very, very important. Uh, to becoming an astronaut. And we work on them quite a bit here. Really Thank you great very, question. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And now a question from HG Burnout for Public School. Um, my name is Terrence and I have a question for you. How will you shower and brush your teeth in space? Oh, great question, Terrence. So it is different in space than, than we do it here on Earth. Um, astronauts have very similar routines. So we get up, we have to take care of our bodies just like we do here. And so uh, we brush our teeth basically the same way. Um, you just, uh, you take your toothbrush, you have a bag of water instead of tap of water, and you can squeeze a little bit of water out of that drinking bag onto your toothbrush or just put it in your mouth one way, either way works. Um, and there's a really great video on YouTube of Chris Hadfield wringing out a washcloth, it's called, and it'll show you how water uh, works in space, how we deal with it. Um, and then if you, uh, when you're gonna spit out the, the saliva and the toothpaste, when you're done, 
we don't have a sink to spit into. So what, what we do is we just spit into a towel. And we kind of use towels to absorb water. And then this is kind of neat. Um, when we're done with a towel, we don't just throw it in the laundry hamper. We actually hang it up and we let it dry because we want to get the water back out of that towel into the air. And then we suck that air, water out of the air and we recycle it and we reuse it over and over again. So that's very important. We always dry out our towels. And then we eventually end up having to throw them out because we don't have a washing machine in space yet. And they end up burning as space junk. Now you asked about showering. We don't have a shower. So what we have to do is just do the same thing, make our washcloth wet. And then we just, uh, just you know, wash ourselves with a washcloth and then uh, hang that up, dry it. You can't really hang it, but you, you kind of tack it to the wall, dry it out, and then eventually we throw it out. Um, where, oh, and shampoo. So because you can't just lather up your hair and then rinse it all out, what we have is kind of a rinseless shampoo where you lather your hair and then you take a towel and you just try to get the shampoo out with a towel. It's kind of a special kind of shampoo. So hygiene in space, just as important as it is here on Earth. Thank you, Jeremy. Here's a question from Pierre Trudeau Public School. Okay. Designs of Canada, what projects or projects are being worked on now? Oh, that's cool. So like I said before, things, things are changing in space. Um, we built Canada Arm, the first one, you know, a long time ago, back in the 80s, and we used it on the space shuttle. And then we built Canada Arm 2, and we use it on the space station. In fact, we were just doing repairs on it last week, doing spacewalks, because it needs maintenance on a regular basis. Um, we're actually working on a Canada Arm 3, if you will. It's the next generation of Canada Arm. It's a more automated arm. It has better software. It's a smarter arm. It allows us to do more complex operations more easily um, and will allow us to do things further away from Earth, like if we go back to the moon. Um, and that's important because that's what we're spending a lot of our time working on is saying, how are we gonna get humans out of low Earth orbit where the space station is, but back to places like the moon, but not just to get to the moon and, and then come home, but to actually learn to live out in deep space, to explore further than the moon. Um, we can use maybe resources on the moon to help us go to places like Mars. Mars has some crazy stuff going on on that planet that we would like to understand. How did that happen? Um, we actually think Mars used to be more like planet Earth, but how did it get to the way it is now? And could that happen to us? If we talk about climate change, um, could there be things happening with climate change that happened on Mars and could help us solve some of the issues? Some really cool things uh, to learn from Mars. And so that's what I'm super excited about right now. We have teams of people that are working on how are we gonna get there? Um, and we're gonna go there. It looks like, uh, you know, we'll go to the moon first and then we'll figure out how to get to Mars. I think that's pretty exciting. So for some people your age, when you're done school and you're looking for a job, we are gonna just think that's super cool. What's it gonna take? It's gonna take, um, you know, A, you have to be passionate about it. It has to be something you want to do and you love to do. But if that's you, uh, you're going to need to take, uh, you know, some courses in the STEM field and, uh, and really challenge yourself. Pretty neat things ahead. Oh, let me just add one more thing. I know it's not a question, but um, I don't know if you watched, but rockets are changing. Rockets are getting cheaper. Actually, we're learning to reuse rockets, have them blast off into space and then turn around, come back and land so that we can refuel it and fly it again like an airplane. That is a huge deal. And that's why I can tell you absolutely that it's going to be different in your future because it's going to be a lot cheaper to get to space. And when it's cheaper to get to space, there's going to be lots of people going to space. Pretty cool stuff. Thank you. So we will try a question from St. Maria Goretti Catholic School. Did you get the chance to solve the problems with the mic? in school in order to be um, what do you have to do in school in order to be an astronaut and I, I talked about finding something you're passionate about and following that academically and so astronauts need 
diverse set of academic skills. So you don't have to be the best in your class at math or science or any particular subject, but you do have to do your best. And you have to learn how to use math and science, for example, um, to help you progress and learn some of the more complex things. Astronauts aren't necessarily the people that build the rockets, but we fly them and we have to understand how they work. We don't necessarily do the math to um, calculate how the rocket will get to the right place in space, but we have to understand how it works so that uh, we can help identify issues, solve problems, and make sure that we, A, keep ourselves alive, and then B, we get the mission done. And so astronauts really just have to have a diverse set of skills from school. And you know what? It's not as hard as you might think because of the first thing I said, find something that you love to learn about. Try everything until you find something that you love learning about and then follow that passion and study it in school. And it will make, no matter what, whether you become an astronaut or not, that's a great way to live. In fact, I asked Chris Hadfield that same question uh, when I was in first year of university and he, he pretty much gave me that same answer is just find something you love to learn about and you'll be really great at it. Another question from St. Gregory the Great. If you get to go to space, what are you most looking forward to seeing or doing? Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely thought about this and it's, it's what I kind of opened with in that I can't wait to just float up to the window after work. Isn't that kind of cool that you just float up to the window and then uh, look out and see our planet. This is, you know, I, I look out from our planet all the time at places like the moon, use telescopes to look at uh, other planets out there and try to imagine what's there, look at nebulas out in our universe. And I wonder about all those places, but there's one thing that becomes very obvious once you start looking at the other places in our solar system is that Earth is the best place. There are all the other planets aren't that great. it will be really cool to go explore and understand, but this is the planet that is the most incredible place to live where you can walk outside without a spacesuit uh, you feel the wind, you can feel the rain, you can smell the trees, you can roll around in the grass. It's really a neat planet. And when you look at the pictures, when you look at the pictures that astronauts send back from space, you realize just how beautiful this planet is. And I know that it'll make me a better um, custodian of our planet and it'll inspire me to, uh, to lead positive change in this world. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> And now a question from uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau Public School. My name is Kale. When you went to Aquarius in Florida, what were some of the challenges you encountered during the seven days? And so it's a great mission for us to practice working as a team and trying to get real stuff done, real science done. So we were doing real exploration on the ocean floor, uh, learning a little bit about the sea life, but also trying to figure out how we would do geology, learn about Mars when we get there. Really neat. One of the big challenges that we simulated was the time delay between Earth and Mars. So if instead of me being in Houston and, and you being in Canada, if you were on Mars right now and I were talking to you in your Mars school, um, it would be somewhere, it would take between five and 10 minutes for me to send a message to you. So you would ask your question and then you'd have to wait somewhere between 10 and, and 20 minutes for me to get the question, answer it, and then for the answer to come back to you on Mars. And that's what we simulated. We simulated the time delay. We had some you know, equipment that when I, we send a message to the surface uh, via voice, it would take that long to get there. Um, and so we realized very quickly, it's not a very good way to communicate. Because um, what, if, what if you don't understand what I say? Right now, you could just say, oh, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Like when one of you asks a question and I missed a word, I asked you to repeat it. That one doesn't work when you have a delay like that. And so we started using other ways to communicate more, things like test, text message or a voice message that we could play over and over again to make sure we understood it. Um, uh, but I have to tell you, you know, that was a challenge. We worked as a team and we became very efficient at it. But the, uh, the real thing to tell you about living on the ocean floor was that it was spectacular. It was so amazing. Uh, just to experience living amongst the marine life was completely different. 
I've, I've gone scuba diving. I've seen these places before, but I've never lived there. And by living on the ocean floor, I had a completely different experience. I started to see that the fish had habit patterns. They would do the exact same thing every single day, go to the same places, just like you and I do. They have these habit patterns. I saw magnificent things in the ocean, and I had just an amazing experience living on the ocean floor uh, as a team of six down there. Pretty cool. Thank you. And another question from H.G. Bernard public school. Uh, what are some of the training activities you have to prepare for space? Yeah, great question. Um, the hardest things we train to, to do in space, I'd say, is spacewalk training. So it's probably pretty obvious to all of you. If you open up the door to space station and you go outside, there's something pretty important that's missing and it's oxygen, it's air and air pressure. And so we have to use the big bulky suit whenever we go outside, our space suit. And it's actually very heavy, very, it's big, it's hard to work in. And it takes a lot of practice to get good at using the space suit to actually fix things outside the space station. So we train in this big pool here, this enormous, the biggest swimming pool you've ever seen. It's indoor um, and it's got an actual model of the International Space Station in it. It's that big. And uh, we basically dive in the spacesuit and underwater so that we can simulate floating in microgravity. And then we go around the space station and we practice fixing things. We try to figure out the best way to fix something. So we'll do it a whole bunch of times here on the ground in the pool before we ever do it in space for real. Um, and so we spent a lot of time training that. So that's spacewalking. Uh, another one is robotics. Operating the cannon arm is a bit tricky. It's, it's a lot like playing a video game. So it's, it's fun and it's cool, but the consequences of you um, doing something wrong in a video game aren't very much. But in space, if you move the arm wrong, you can A, you can break the cannon arm, but two, you can put a hole in your space station or you could kill your buddy who's out on the spacewalk. And so we, uh, we practice uh, using cannon arm uh, quite a bit as well. We have to be very proficient at that. You know, the other thing we train that's kind of cool is when, uh, when something breaks at your house, maybe you or your parents are able to fix it, but um, what if you're not able to fix it? What do you do? You, you pick up the phone and you call a repair person to come and help you with that job. Well, in space, we can't do that. We have to fix everything that happens on the space station. So we actually spend a lot of time learning the systems of the space station and how to repair them so that we can keep that thing running in space, which is pretty tricky. Thank you, Jeremy. Another question from St. Maria Garetti. Uh, hi, my name is DeWitt and this is my question. During the test did you have tough times and did you want feel like you wanted to quit and just go home um let's see were there times that i wanted to quit uh, i would say not not in not in my astronaut training so much um i'm surrounded by a really great team i worked really hard to get here um so i can't really remember a time where i when i really wanted where i was really contemplating quitting but I, I understand that, you know, that's just a normal part of life, though. Um, there are times in your life where you're doing something that you maybe don't love to do, or maybe you don't feel supported in it. And that has definitely happened to me in the past where I didn't feel like I was good enough to do something, or maybe I didn't feel like I was as good as the other people and I wasn't going to be good enough at it, so I shouldn't do it. I could probably come up with some examples when I was an air cadet, uh, when I was uh, well, your age, when I started Air Cadets, basically, when I was uh, 12 years old. And Air Cadets was asking me to do things. They were pushing me. They were challenging me. All I wanted to do was learn how to fly with the Air Cadets. But the Air Cadets said, we'll teach you to fly, Jeremy, but you're going to have to do some other things, too. Like, you're going to have to learn to stand up in front of people and, and be in charge and, and give them commands on the parade square, you know, for marching around. Or you're going to have to teach a class you have to stand in front of them and speak to them. You're going to have to challenge yourself, go out in the public and be a good Canadian citizen and contribute to society. And some of those things I was pretty shy about. I actually didn't want to get in front of the class and speak. I just wanted to, to stay in the background. 
uh, and they pushed me to do it. And there were definitely times when I was kind of like, oh, I don't know if this is worth it. And, uh, but in the end, I, I, stu I did stick to it. And the one thing I really learned, and I use this all the time now, is that I just tell people the truth and I ask for help. Nobody, nobody goes through life without having to ask for help from time to time. And so you should never feel like you can't tell people the truth about how you feel or about what you're scared about. I do that all the time now. I just tell them, hey, I, I don't remember that thing. You know, even as an astronaut, they say, um, hey, we need you to do this. And I'll be like, oh, I know you taught me that. I've forgotten it. Uh, I'm going to need some help with this one. Hey, that's totally okay. As long as you're honest with people and you're trying your best. And another question from St. Gregory the Great. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? That's a super fun question to think about. Um, I certainly, I, I don't believe extraterrestrial life is visiting us here on Earth today. I, I've never seen any evidence of that. I, none of my colleagues have seen uh, of, of aliens or UFOs uh, that they thought were from another planet. Um, so I don't think they're here today, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. We really don't know the answer to that. Uh, in fact, you know, we, we spend effort and time looking and listening to see if we can find lot signs of extraterrestrial life out in the universe, because how amazing would that be to actually come across other life forms in the universe? I think it'd be very, very cool. So, I, and if you look at the size of our universe and how many stars that are out there, I mean, now we think there's like something like a couple trillion uh, or a trillion galaxies out there, each with a hundred billion stars each. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of stars out there. And every star that we look at now, we're just getting the technology in the last 10 years to be able to look at a star really far away and, and try to understand if there's a planet there and a little bit about the planet. Every star we look at, we're finding planets pretty much. So that means there's just a ridiculous amount of planets in the universe. It's hard to believe there won't be life forms somewhere out there in the universe. And so I think they're out there. They're just really, really, really far away. And so it's hard. It's like finding a needle in the haystack. It's very hard to, to figure out whether they exist or not. I hope they do. And I hope we eventually are able to communicate with them. I think that'd be really neat for our society. Thank you, Jeremy. So we will have a last question from Pierre Elliott Trudeau Public School. Hi, my name is Maya, and this is my question. The human body is designed for the pull of Earth's gravity. So how do you think your body would react to the microgravity? Yeah, really important question, because if we're going to be a space faring species where we send people to live in deep space for you know, a year, two years, five years at a time in microgravity, what are the impacts to their body and what do we need to do to keep them healthy? And we know from, from working on the International Space Station and taking a lot of medical or doing a lot of medical tests, we know that microgravity is hard on our body. Our body adapts really well. We feel pretty good up there. Um, you know, one of the things that happens is blood right now, I'm here on earth, blood is getting pulled from my upper body down into my legs by gravity but in space that doesn't happen and so the blood kind of pools up in the upper body in your face and it, your face gets puffy and it feels like you have a bit of a cold like you're just a little bit stuffed up because of all the blood in your face um, but that's just kind of a nuisance it's not a big deal um, something else that happens is you your spine will stretch just a little bit uh, when you're in space because it doesn't have that constant pressure um, some people's eyesight changes a little bit in space and we're trying to understand why that one is weird um, we have some good theories but we're working on it oh here's a big one bones and muscle if you're if you're floating around in space all the time and you're you're um you're not using your bones and your muscles like you do on earth your bones start to get weak they lose bone mass and then your muscles will get really weak and then if you come back to gravity, you can't really support your own weight and you're at risk of breaking your bones a lot easier. So what we do in space is astronauts exercise two hours every single day uh, so that we can put a lot of stress on our bones and, and keep our muscles strong. 
And we've gotten a lot better at this on space station. It used to be astronauts would come back after six months in pretty bad shape. And now they're coming back in really good shape. Now we're still working on it. It's not perfect, but now we're, we're confident we could send people on a mission to Mars. And when they get there, they'd actually be able to walk around on the surface and take care of themselves. So we've learned a lot with respect to that. Um, and then uh, just like here on earth, um, it's fun to eat a lot of uh, sugar and unhealthy food all the time, but it's not, it's not what keeps your body fueled and healthy. And so we actually, we eat really healthy in space. We make sure we're getting a lot of vegetables. Uh, we have a balanced diet and, uh, and, and we have treats in space. We have desserts in space, but we just make sure we eat a balanced diet and we stay healthy just like you do here on earth. Well, that was great. I appreciated all the questions. They were great questions. Um, if I, if I could leave you with two things, if you can remember two things from today, the first one is I want you to know that space is changing. Uh, the space program you see today is going to be completely different in 10 years. So when you're finishing school, there are going to be so many amazing opportunities for you to work in the field of space and helping our planet and our society by leveraging space and space exploration. So if that interests you, we could really use your help. And that all you have to do is work, do your best in school, be interested in school and challenge yourself and, and take care of others. And you're gonna be ready for those challenges in the future. Uh, the other thing, um, no matter what you choose, whatever your passion is, it takes an entire team of people on this planet to make the whole thing work. So you all have different passions. Whatever you choose to do, there's one just very simple very simple trick basically to being successful in life and being happy. And that is to believe in yourself. When you feel inside of you that you found something you want to do and you're a little bit scared. Perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. Believe in yourself. You can do it. I absolutely know each and one of you can achieve your goals and ask for help. Ask others to help you share your goals with teachers, family, friends, and be that person for, for them, support them in their goals. And you're going to have amazing opportunities. I have been so fortunate have been supported in my life and I, I really wish that for all of you in Canada really need you so uh, I wish you all the very best thanks for spending some time with me today talking about something I love uh, space exploration and you all take care so long